They live quite close to Illy, so they have met in the past. So Amazing. nice little story there that they have crossed past, uh, cross paths in the past, and now they find themselves in the final of Bologna. Now Pierre did get 48 points in Swiss, whereas Illy 47. So Pierre, due to having that slightly superior Swiss record is the highest seed and therefore is going to be able to go first in game number one. Now, while they might have the disadvantage in terms of matchup on paper, that is definitely going to swing things back into Pierre's favor with the fact that they're going to be able to go first in game one. So I think we've got a really exciting final here. Let us know who you think is going to be winning. This is the final. And of course, so much to play for, not only the pride, but also a whole binder filled with enchanted and foil cards from Ursula's return. What an incredible prize to go along with everything they've already won. As you say, here we go. Don't go anywhere. This is the grand final. Stick around. You don't want to miss it. And already I see that Gaston, arrogant hunter in the hand of Ellie. Two cost, four two, reckless. Yeah, it's going to be three cards mulligan for Ely, it seems like. Maybe four, in fact. Of course, going to be looking for some ramp options, maybe a fishbone quill. Pierre going to definitely be aware of the threat of fishbone quill. We saw in the semi-final them utilizing bare necessity uh -huh. to discard the fishbone quill from their opponent and therefore shutting down the ramp option. Sapphire, of course, looking to get lots of ink early in the game. And it's interesting that both players no overlap in terms of ink color. Ruby and Sapphire for uh, Ely, and then Pierre on Amber and Steel. So a real big variety of inks in this game as the fist bump comes through. And we now are ready. Pierre with the high seed will be able to go first. There's a Robin Hood which can be played on turn one. And there's a potential Robin Hood shift which could come through on turn number three. Yeah, no, this is looking like a pretty nice opening hand. We've got that one drop. We've got the Ursula two drop if we desire it on turn two. The Aerial Spectacular Singer. There's the Grab Your Swords as well. This looks pretty good. I don't know how useful that Grab Your Swords is going to be early, but the rest of the hand looks pretty darn good. A and Illy with a Porpoiseagle in hand. I'm also spying that Queen, a Tamatoa at the back there. They do also have that Maurice's Workshop, Ooh. which is an uninkable card, so it's not going to be able to go into the ink world. The Porpoiseagle comes through, card drawn. But Illy definitely could consider going for that on turn three. Might just want to try and go for the Queen on turn three, though. Now, Pierre does have ways of removing the queen while it's ready before it can exert something like a, and then along came zeus which could be sung by a character with singer four mm -hmm. and there is a character with singer four in the hand of pierre that goes by the name of ursula vanessa and there she is singer four so and then along came zeus could be an option also strength of a raging fire if there's enough characters down on the board for Pierre, could remove the queen. It's going to be the scuttle. Going to be looking at four cards off the top, and an item can go into the hand. And look at that. There's two to choose from. Ice block or fishbone quill. Ice block uninkable. It is going to be the fishbone quill, and Pierre gets to see that working in a similar way to Ariel. Yeah, that's a great move. And also, Peter, I want to draw some attention to the teeth and ambitions in Ely's hand, which can be sung by this scuttle and could be able to put two damage on this Robin Hood. Of course, it may well be too late. Pierre going into his turn three is going to ink. He's going to ink that champion of Sherwood. Yeah, really interesting. I was expecting that to be shifted in oh, this. Oh, we time. have another. Where yeah, we have two. another. Of course you ink the normal <laughs> and you play the Enchanted. I wouldn't have it any other way. Imagine if Pierre inks the Enchanted to play the non-Enchanted Baker. There would have been riots. Yeah, then, then be the rules. We want to see the Enchanted. And this is um, potentially the first example of going first benefiting Pierre. Because if it had been the other way around, then Ellie would have potentially been able to play Tifa and Ambition to remove this yep. Robin Hood before it shifted. So, yet already we're seeing the difference made by going first. I think we're inking that Teeth and Ambitions. No, no, it's still in hand. Yeah, Teeth and Ambitions and Brawl, some removal options. And Pierre also just taking that opportunity in the previous turn to quest as much as possible. Another Robin Hood into the inkwell. And it looks like Lawrence is going to come down that 0-4 stat line. But remember, when there's no damage counters on Lawrence, it's getting plus four strength. So it's a four strength, four willpower character, which quests for two right now. More questing from Pierre, who is making an amazing start up to seven lore 
four already. And Ely's going to be really looking to clear this board as quickly as possible, which that fishbone quill can certainly help them do. There's a be prepared in their hand. Yeah, you're absolutely right. But it is kind of the story of Sapphire over the course of the weekend. Really slow starts. Their opponent racing away with that early law. But Sapphire's potential to catch up is incredible with the combination of Lucky Dime and Tamatoa. That Maui's going to come down, hero of all, and take out that Robin Hood. That's going to allow Pierre to draw a card because when Robin Hood is banished, that's what you get to do. You get to draw. So really, you, um, really versatile cards. We're going to see the Brawl hitting the Inkwell, and we pass back to Pierre, who does still have that Singer 4 available to him. Yeah, Scuttle quested as well here. Now, you might be wondering, why is there only one damage counter on Maui when it challenged the Robin Hood? There's no ice blocks around, but it was actually the Porpsicle which was used to heal Maui by two. And there's now the Porpsicle in the discard, but only one damage counter on Maui. Now, Ursula Vanessa is going to sing Bear Necessities, and the Be Prepared is available in the hand for Ely. There is the Workshop, there is the Brawl. They're all act actions, or non-character cards, rather. They're all options. Surely Be Prepared is going to be chosen by Pierre here. Yeah, it seems like it's probably the safest choice. Uh, the Brawl there could remove the Ursula Vanessa. And of course, this Maurice's workshop could come down and start generating value for Illy, but he doesn't have any other items, so it might be a while before he could get that advantage. So he does choose the Be Prepared. Yeah, there is a Lawrence which is going to consider challenging Maui. It's actually going to challenge the Scuttle instead, and then Rapunzel oh. healing Lawrence back up to that 4-4 stat line and a card drawn for Pierre. Now, Ely is at 7 ink, which is why that Bear Necessities came through from Pierre at this moment to discard it. Gaston into the inkwell, Brawl onto Rapunzel, and 3 ink spare, which is just enough for the workshop. Now, Maui can challenge either Vanessa or the Lawrence, but if it challenged Lawrence, the Maui would be removed. Mm -hmm. So Vanessa is the card chosen. No cards in hand right now for Ely, but an item off the top with that Maurice's workshop would be tremendous. And there's a lot of items in this deck, Baker. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The likes of Fishbone Quill, Porpsicles. There's a Maui's fish hook in yep. there as well. Lots of very unique items that we don't see all the time. And yeah, as you say, any item off the top, as long as he's got enough, uh, one more ink than the cost of that item, then that Maurice's Workshop will be able to draw a card. And hey, how about Maurice's Workshop into Maurice's Workshop? And let's really start to flood let's our hands. Let's see hand. what it is, Baker. It's a let it go. It's a lovely, wonderful, <laughs> set, uh, not set championships, a DLC. DLC, there we go. <laughs> Promo card, which is so great to see. It removes the card from the board into the inkwell, but it's not a card draw tool. Cinderella, the only character standing right now. Padita has just been drawn by Pierre, and that could be a game changer. It sure Rapunzel could. into the inkwell. Padita down onto the board, and Ursula Vanessa, Robin Hood are options to be putting onto the board. When Padita enters play, a two cost character or less can be played and whenever it quests Pierre is in a really good position big moment off the top it's a scuttle oh there's a pretty big good one scuttle That's moment an item. there's three to pick from so the fish hook the fish bone quill or the dime gonna be the fish hook yeah, makes sense to potentially turn our characters evasive and keep them safe because Ellie doesn't have a whole lot going on, but this workshop could lead to a lot of card draw in a row. We've got three items on the board at the moment. Yeah, this workshop was also triggered there, so another card for Ely. There's one card in hand for them right now. I think it might have been Tamatoa Baker. Oh, that's a pretty good piece. I think we're at one, two, three, four, five. Is it six ink we're at at the moment? So, or maybe seven. So we're nearly there. And that Tamatoa, of course, can recycle items, let us play them, and keep drawing off of Maurice's workshop. So it's not over. Triple quest for four. Pedita is going to trigger her ability again. And Robin Hood comes into play. This Pedita is putting in. Big, big work for Pierre. Now, at this moment in time, they have a few options in hand. I think there's a grab your swords, a Rapunzel. Do you play further into a potential be prepared, or can you risk just holding on to this Rapunzel? And then if a be prepared comes through, then you play Rapunzel. It's a big decision for Pierre here, and decides to play nothing at all, which I really like. They're only six lore away. 
Yeah, they're closing in on game already. And yeah, you saw the power of that Padita on play and on quest, just playing another character from uh, of two costs or less from the discard, just plus one every turn. Down comes the so shiny Tamatoa. We do have enough ink. He's going to return the Porpticle to the hand, but I don't think there's enough ink to play it immediately. There is not. No. And, and even yet... if he had one, he might not have done it, just because obviously you want to trigger the Maurice's workshop off of that. So he'd preferably like two ink. Yep. Pierre now questing again, surely, with all the characters available. A Robin Hood shift here would have given them an extra lore. They are six away, currently questing for five. So a Robin Hood shift would have won Pierre the game on the spot, Baker. But it's yep. not an option. Yep, he did. Cinderella Stouthearted as well would have been yep. a, a game-winning draw there. Yeah, for sure. We saw that Stouthearted closing out games and when we watched Pierre's last match. But, yeah, bearing in mind, Pierre did ink a Robin Hood champion of Sherwood right at the beginning. But them's the breaks. You've got to play the hand you've got. You don't know what situation you're going to be in three, four turns from now. But, yeah, one, you've got to assume that we're going to be questing heavy here and then just be one away. Now, we had Amber Steele down as a... But, uh, it's a good matchup for Ruby Sapphire, but based off game one, Pierre has got other <laughs> ideas. I don't think anyone told Pierre that that's the case. Yeah. <laughs> of course, this Padita on quest could potentially grab another two cost or less character. I'm not sure if there don't are think any there's left. Anything else yeah, in. he took the Robin Hoods and the Vanessa, so won't be able to take anything else just yet. Pierre knows he's win is within grasp of that game one victory. Yeah, and of course, untimed rounds here, so definitely worth them taking their time. They go for the Grab Your Swords, which is going to deal two damage to both Scuttle and Tamatoa. And then I think we're just going to see the Cinderella challenge the Scuttle and then questing with everything else, which gets them up to 18 and within touching distance. Again, holding on to that Rapunzel Baker, just in case Ely finds that Be Prepared. They've then got a character to play down on the board, which can quest for two. In comes the Porpsicle. <gasps> be Prepared, prepared off the top of it. You see the look on Ely's face, that Porpsicle immediately finding it. Yes, we're going to do exert the Maurice's workshop to draw another card, find a Gaston Arrogant Hunter. That's going to be inked. We're playing another Porpsicle. Does he enough, have enough ink to trigger the Maurice's workshop? He's uh, sung by Tamatoa oh, as well. Oh, 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 There's no ink at all to play Be Prepared. And a scuttle comes through, and the items are now being developed, and there's many to choose from here. Three items and the queen oh, off of the scuttle. Of course, an item can be added to hand. It's going to be the Vitalosphere. But this decision from Pierre to hold on to that Rapunzel is looking really good right now. Pierre's going to be hoping to find something like a Mr. Smee. Rapunzel and Smee onto the board this turn could be really interesting. Yeah, for sure. Try and force maybe another be prepared from the opponent. Just make, just keep asking the, asking the questions, make them have the answers. But yeah, this queen hasn't put in any work yet, but I believe there is still time. But Pierre is within, tu within touching distance of 20. Laura is sitting at 18. Illy has a lot of catching up to do. Can he snipe it away from Pierre? Now, Pierre has some interesting options here. They can go for Rapunzel and Vanessa, but they could just go for Robin Hood and Vanessa instead. Now, what Pierre's saying here to Illy is you have to remove one of my characters at least, whereas if they play just the Rapunzel, then you would still have to remove just one character but Rapunzel. So if... Ely can remove one of the characters. Mm -hmm. Pierre's still going to have that Rapunzel to fall back on later on. The ice block comes through and is exerted. No, changing of the mind from Ely. Ice block is going to come down. Yeah, worth saying as well, Pierre Stop knows... Queen. Oh, it's off the Queen. There you go. Pierre knows that that daring visitor Sisu is in Illy's deck, so maybe that was part of the motivation behind not playing the Rapunzel, who would be banished by that. Wow, look at this card draw tool from the Maurice's workshop. You it's heard so it. good, Baker. You heard it from Illy, the best draw engine in the game, and he's showing us how, wow. how, how good it can be. Down comes that Sisu, removing the Robin Hood, who has lost one strength from the ice block. Illy has really turned the board state around. He's got a lot of catching up to do still but could he do it? Well, this Sisu would have removed Rapunzel, so I think Pierre made the right decision to hold on to sure. that Rapunzel. Sure. And it is a Smee that's been drawn, so Pierre could go Smee, Rapunzel this turn, and risk another board wipe. With all those ice blocks, there's also just the simple potential of a giant legendary Sisu coming through to clear as well. Yep. No, you're absolutely right. This Sisu, uh, sorry, this ice block could lower the strength by one. Just trying to get a look on that. Six ink available. Yep, so, it, so it could lower Smee's strength by one, take it down to a two drop. 
That would be enough for the floodborne Sisu. This has got to be an intense decision. Do you extend here? Because if you do extend into something like a be prepared, although that wouldn't necessarily be the best move from Ely, but if he's going to lose the game, he'd have no choice. Decides not to go for it. And with the amount of card drop attention off a simple item, and there it is, it's the Popsicle. Now, there is a brawl available in Ely's what is it gonna as well, be? which usually can't sh oh. move the Smee. But with that ice block, the brawl is going to be able to remove Smee. Look at the work this queen is putting in already. It has cheated two items onto the board. This has just completely turned around. Ely was topping. He had barely anything. And look at the advantage he has generated, courtesy of this Maurice's workshop. Of course, that be prepared off the top was really good. But again, he's drawn quite a lot. And you, his deck's built consistently. There are four copies. You can't hold it against him. Yeah, and this is where those sleepy flutes can be so good in this matchup because you reach a state where Ruby Sapphire just takes over and they can potentially remove every character card you play. Now, considering Ely to put that Maurice's workshop into the inkwell, but maybe deciding to hold on to it and use it. Imagine a double Maurice's workshop on the board. That would be even more card draw potential. Yeah, and one Maurice's workshop triggers the other Maurice's workshop. It's I can certainly see why it's putting Isu. work. And it's going to remove the, the Smee as well due to the ice block. Big questing power as well. Suddenly, Ely's at seven. He is at seven. He has three, four, five law on the board. Pierre drawing into a poo pirate okay. captain. Rapunzel oh. and Piglet, both cards need to be removed, Baker, yep. for Ely to stay in this game. There is, a, I think that's a Madame Medusa in Ely's hand, I do believe. No, it's a Brawl. Okay, well, that still helps us deal with one of the characters. We do have that be prepared, so if, if there is no other answer, then we will see the be prepared just to stop Pierre winning the game. But can he do it any other way? We see the Maurice's workshop coming down. He's going Ethan to draw ambitions can deal with the piglet. The brawl can deal with Rapunzel. Oh, this is just what Ely wanted to see. He's going to be able to do a complete board wipe of Pierre's side and then just keep asking the questions. And Pierre now has got to be feeling the sweat. The Queen is going to exert again, looking for another item, and yet again it finds one every wow. single time. The consistency of Ely's deck is absolutely tremendous. Maurice's workshop enters the board exerted, which doesn't matter. You never even need this character, this item readied. This is incredible. Pierre with such a big head start, but Ely has just completely turned it around, and now he has Laura on the board and could potentially be on a two, three turn clock. Maurice's workshop. If I was playing on this board, Baker, I would need about seven tables. <laughs> it is tremendous at how organized Ely is keeping this table. Ten, I, no, eleven. I, uh. I'm going to count one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven items in play. Now, Goodness Ely up me. To ten. Ely is ten law away. It's an Ursula Vanessa, which crest for one. Well, guess what? Pierre only needs one law. So Ely has to answer Ursula Vanessa. Ursula Vanessa is the final boss here for Ely. There is a B prepared, but is there going to be a more efficient way for Ely to deal with it? I'd love to know how much ink Ely has to see whether it's worth the Flavisham. Because obviously, if you miss, you need to play Be Prepared. Yep. Worst case, you can always sing it with the Sisu. That's true. That's a very good point. That Sisu is an eight-cost character, so that would work fine. We're going to play the Vitalisphere. We're drawing courtesy of Maurice's workshop. Drawing oh. lots. <laughs> now, there's a dime. Now, the Lucky Dime Baker could add three law this turn for Ely with that Sisu down on the board already. It is going to be Be Prepared, though, and it is going to be a Lucky Dime as well. So I think Sisu singing the Be Prepared and then the Lucky Dime. I think this is a great play because this, this is check. He has a Tamatoa in hand. Oh, my goodness. There is a Tamatoa in hand who will be questing for more than 10. But this, well, obviously won't be able to quest, but this Lucky Dime will take that 10 law and immediately give Ely game. Look at Pierre's face, the smile there. I don't think he can believe what's happened. He shows him the Tamatoa yeah. and he takes game one. Wow. Goodness me, the Maurice's workshop and the Queen putting in the absolute business. This was the most incredible comeback <laughs> I have ever seen in a game of Disney Law Karna. Amber Steel Songs at 19 law. Well, that's great. 19 doesn't matter. You have nope. to get to 20 <laughs> from Ursula's return. What a prize that is. What a prize on top of everything they've already run. One, the Stouthearted Cinderella, the Rapunzel, the Rapunzel playmat, the Mickey BLT, the invitation to the European Championships. And now we are playing for the crown. Illy already throwing three cards 
yards down. He's interested in throwing a while. Well, that's probably what he's keeping, I dare say. Yeah, the fishbone yeah. quill yeah. being held on to. Also looking at holding on to that Sisu. Three cost uninkable. Maybe to just try and negate some of the early questing power that Pierre is looking to pull off. Sure. Yeah, especially if you combine it with Ice Block, you better pick off things like the P uh, Piglet Pooh Pirate Captain, uh, but already can take out the Ursula Vanessa, the Cinderella Borum Sensation. This daring visitor Sisu is putting in so much work in this particular matchup. Yeah, Ely could also hold on to the Ice Block here, which could be a nice turn one play to then set up that turn three Sisu. Sure. Sisu can banish characters with one strength or less. So if you play the Ice Block, exert the Ice Block, suddenly a two strength character like a Piglet Pooh Pirate Captain could be removed by that Sisu and that is the card which Ely is really considering if they hold on to or not and it looks like they decided to get rid of it so really interesting only two cards kept mm -hmm. by Ely little smile there from Ely's of the crowd and uh, there does appear to be a big crowd out on the floor watching this on the screen we can hear them they're hyped they're motivated I, I hope this goes to game three just because I don't want it to end but I'm sure if Ely has his way he will take a 2-0 yeah so Pierre will be going first of course, before they're able to play a character, they're going to have to ink something. It's going to be a strength of a raging fire, and there is a Cinderella as a turn one play for Pierre. Can, of course, sing songs that cost three or less. Flabbersham into the inkwell for Ely, and in comes the Ruby Shield of Virtue. It yeah. is called the Shield of Virtue, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Chapter one card, one cost, inkable, and you can exert it and pay three to ready a chosen character. Really nice combination with that queen. You could have multiple triggers of that effect to find items and we saw in the last game this queen hitting an item every single turn so Lorcana fans sleeve up your queens sleeve up yeah. your Maurice's workshops they're pretty good <laughs> well, Ross managed to pull one in the Dizzy Lorcana stream so he's going to be a very happy man he is queen pop off in a big way here now Ely has a Gaston as an option for turn two which could be a nice way to just try and slow down any questing power from Pierre we saw the way this one's going to play out Ruby Sapphire the longer the game goes on the more dominant it's going to become so Pierre's going to be really looking to get as much lore as possible in the early game here yeah I do think that's absolutely the game plan exactly as you just uh, just said Ely we just saw once Ely starts to build up that big item count get those Maurice's workshops onto the board once he's got those items blocks he just has so many ways of controlling the board especially in combination with brawls and things like that we see the Pooh pirate captain piglet coming down and the cinderella ballroom cessation going to quest for one every law counts we learned that in the last game we certainly did we see the lucky dime in lily's hand not something he really wants to see early but better to have it than not if it's discarded with a whole new world it's not the end of the world obviously that tamatoa could bring it back we're considering inking no Obviously, this is untimed. This is the finals. Players are free to take as much time as they want to think over these moves. The Flavisham is going to be inked to the Vitalisphere's played and back over to Pierre. That just that slow start where Ely starts to build up those items on board. Yeah, and Ely, of course, in the Mulligan had the option of keeping that ice block. If uh -huh. there's an ice block down, then the Sisu could come through, remove the Piglet. It is going to be Smee, so some nice questing power. Piglet now questing for three with the fact that there are three characters on the board. And Cinderella quest for one for the second time in this game, which puts Pierre up to five lore. They're a quarter of the way there. Ely with a bit of a slower start, I feel like, compared to the previous game. But there's the Sisu. It's going to banish the Cinderella. And Ely now kind of threatening that shift six legendary Sisu uh -huh. in a few turns time. Yeah, for sure. But this Pooh Pirate Captain will most likely be able to quest for three again as long as Pierre can get a, another character on board. He is holding a Lawrence that I've seen. He's got a Storm Rage on and a Long Came Zeus in the hand. Yeah, we're going to play that Lawrence questing with Smee and Piglet for five. And very similar to the last game, Pierre taking a very early lead. But we just learn the hard way yep. this game is not over <laughs> no, certainly not Gaston is in the hand for Ely as well as the Queen as the inkable options Ice Block Sisu and Lucky Dime are uninkable so it looks like it's going to be the Gaston into the inkwell and it's going to be a decision between the Queen or the Sisu it's going to be the Queen and it's going to be given rush by the oh. Portosphere here and plus two Plus two strength as well from the Vitalisphere, I beg your pardon. Yep. So it's now going to have Rush and two extra strength. 
and the Sisu. In fact, it was just the Sisu with that extra two strength yep. taking out the Smi, wanting to preserve the Queen on the board, which makes a lot of sense. So the rush wasn't useful, just the plus two extra strength. Yeah, for sure, especially since uh, Illy doesn't have a fishbone quill. That might be a nice hit off the, the off of the Queen, but you got to think he wants to find that Maurice's workshop so we can start to uh, build a hand. We're seeing that Storm... Is that Storm Rage on? Storm Rage on. Yep, Storm Rage on in the hand. in there as well. Isn't enough to take out the Queen, who has a 3-3 three, three stat line. Yeah, so remember this Lawrence? Zero strength, but when it has no damage, it's going to get four strength. So right now, it is a four strength card. Storm Rage on is sung by Lawrence. Two damage into the Queen. Can Pierre finish the job and remove the Queen from the board? But also, they want to try and develop another character down so this piglet starts questing for three instead of the one it's currently questing for. Yeah, Pierre at 10, Law. He, this time, it could go differently. He could make that race to game. We are able to get the Robin Hood down. So piglet does quest for that three, bring to Pierre to 13, and another Pooh Pirate Captain coming onto the board. So that's six, seven, that's eight law on board. So Ely does need to answer this. Of course, the Queen will be able to take out one of the Pooh Pirate Captains, but still, that's a lot of pressure that the Pierre's starting to build up. We did find the Maurice's Workshop, I believe, off of that top. Yep, there's also an Ice Block available for Ely with that Sisu around in the mix as well. So could be using the Ice Block to lower the power of the Piglet, for example, and keep the Queen on the board. Instead, could use it to lower the power of this other piglet and then the sisu comes through removing it from the nice. board so Ely's managed to remove two of the questing threats from pierre but still able to quest for three getting to 16 this turn he which is, is getting pretty close baker to that magical 20 mark you're right absolutely within touching distance we're going to see that boring sensation cinderella be inked the long came zeus is going to get rid of the sisu pierre respect the ability to shift Absolutely. into the Floodborne. If that happened, that would be devastating. The Flavisham is going to come down. I do believe that was off the top, because I did see the Workshop and the Lucky Dime in his hand previously. So, very nice. And which item does he want to remove? Obviously, it's the choice between the Shield and the Ice Block. It is going to be the Ice Block, finding us Porpsicle and Maui. Maui, really nice. It's going to help to control the board a little bit more. And, of course, Porpsicle thinning our deck and more items on board for Flavisham. Yum, 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 yum. And Ely's going to ink the Porpsicle. Mm. Could have inked the Maui and played the Porpsicle, but of course that Maui is going to give them that little bit of board control for that sure. they so desperately needed this time. Big moment off the top for Pierre. They've got a whole new world in hand and something else which I didn't quite catch. It's a quest. It's a double whole new world right now. That is not what you're looking for if your name is Pierre. They could go for the whole new world if they have enough ink, but I'm not even convinced they've got five ink yet. They're at 19 again. Surely not. And Pierre is going to go for the whole new world, I believe. No. Ely seems to have called the game right there. Pierre oh, it's does over. take it. Pierre has made it one game apiece. Wow. The opening hand here. Of course, we're now looking at the Amber Steel Songs hand. They're going to be mainly just looking for a nice curve, maybe try and shift in the Robin Hood and get a whole new world through, possibly. Ely's going to be really looking to try and find some ramp options, that Mickey Mouse or the Fishbone Quill, uh -huh. the main ways. Now, I don't think Pierre's playing the Queen, so often what you might be able to do is the Amber Steel Songs player going second is play the Queen on one, shift the Queen on two, sing a whole new world, and discard that Fishbone Quill. That's not an option. No. But what could be is Pierre playing Bare Necessities on two and trying to discard a Fishbone Quill from Ely to disrupt the ramp. Yeah, that'd be a really nice play. But we've seen before, if Ely starts to get these Maurice's workshops on the board, it can just get carried away. But here we go. Our players have finished their mulligan. The final shuffle. This is the final match of the DLC Bologna. A cut from both players. And here we go. Ely will be going first. We're going to be inking that so shiny Tamatara, and I expect the Porpsicle is going to come down, drawing a card for Ely and oh passing over. Goodness. There she is, Second Joe. queen into there the hand. Is. That's a nice foil queen as well, so sure. really nice. And no turn one from Pierre, which is not ideal. They did ink a card, but didn't play anything down onto the board. No, they inked the Cinderella stout-hearted, but nothing to follow up with. Not the best start. Double Sisu in the Ely's hand, oh, isn't it? Scuttle has missed. Oh, Aker. that was off Scuttle. I thought that was his hand. You don't see that too often in, in Ely's deck. Scuttle missing. It does happen sometimes in a similar way to the aerial. Bare necessities, oh. bare necessities played, hoping to find that fish bone quill but Ely doesn't have it right now but could find it by exerting the queen in a couple of turns time now the teeth and ambitions or the porpsicles are options to discard 
Which do you expect Pierre's going to go for here? I think there is a bit of an argument for the Latif and Ambitions as he does take wow. that choice because Pierre is running a lot of characters with two, or strength, uh, two strength or less, such as the Pooh Pirate Captain, yep. Cinderella Ballroom Sensation. So I think Pierre, I th that's where I'd have gone personally. Just a bit more of a guarantee that your characters are going to stick, but not a good start from Pierre, who hasn't been at, the, obviously, the bare necessities on two, but you would much rather be singing it with a Ballroom Sensation Cinderella. The Queen makes her way onto Illy's Field. So next turn, we will get to see the top four cards of the deck and see if we find an item to cheat into play. Yeah, so many uninkables in the hand for Pierre, which is why they had to do it. But here's the Queen. Top four cards. An item that costs four or less can be played for free exerted. It's the Vitalosphere. Not exactly the Fishbone Quill or the Maurice's Workshop they would have been hoping for. Nope. But certainly not bad as the Porpsicle enters the building. Scuttle enters the Inkwell and another Queen enters the board. And you've got to think, Joe, missed on that first Scuttle, but with every miss and you put those cards at the bottom, yep. you increase your chances you that you do. are going to hit with these other queen exerts or potential other scuttles. So the first miss may have been quite hard, but I, th I think that's increased his odds of getting better hits throughout the rest of the game. The good news for Pierre is they found an inkable card in the form of Cinderella. Excellent. Three copies of Let the Storm Rage On, one copy of Grab Your Swords, and a Lawrence in there as well. Ely currently at two law. Pierre hasn't got a law on the board yet, and they're going to need to start getting law as quickly as possible. Lawrence could remove the queen here that's exerted. Mm -hmm. But of course, there is another one waiting to follow up. Yep. We're going to be singing Let the Storm Rage On with Lawrence, putting two damage counters on the Queen. Okay, Baker, this is big. So there's another Storm Rage On coming from Pierre onto the Queen, and they have the opportunity to maybe Zeus this Queen in the future. Of course, they had to pay three mm -hmm. for the second copy of Let the Storm Rage On. But if they can start removing these queens and, and disrupting the card draw engine for Ely, Pierre could claw their way back into this one. There's still no ramp available for Ely. But a much slower start from Pierre. Yeah, I, think, I think that was a heartbreaking start, to, re, to be honest. No turn one, turn two, played the bare necessities, which is not awful, but if that Cinderella had been down a bit sooner, we'd have been able to sing Storm Rage on, draw more cards. So Pierre definitely coming from uh, coming back from behind this time, but he's made it all the way to second uh, to the finals. I'm sure he can put it out. Now, really interesting here from Ely. We saw the Queen get exerted, but if I'm not mistaken, it actually quested or did, no, it challenged into Lawrence. So the scuttle damaged Lawrence down, uh -huh. which then reduced its strength by four, and then the queen challenged the the, uh, the Lawrence to remove it. Now, the reason for that is, as much as Ely loves the queen drawing them cards, their job here is just keep Pierre as far away from 20 law as possible. They know the longer this game goes on with their lucky dime, they're going to win. If the, As long as they stop Pierre getting to 20, Ely will get the board into a position where they can win the game. So that's why they just decide to make what might look like a bit of a weird decision to remove the Lawrence as grab your swords removes the queen. Yep, just wants to draw the game out to those later stages where Ruby Sapphire really starts to take over after we've developed those Maurice's workshops and we can get lucky dimes down. So, yep, Ely, as the longer the, longer the game goes on, Ely does seem favoured. He's holding a be prepared for if Pierre is able to amount a bit of a board. We're going to play another Lawrence. Yeah, in comes Lawrence, and Cinderella is going to get one law on the board for Pierre. 19 more needed, though, for that victory. There's a scuttle. Yeah, scuttle, a nice option. Just going to be a two-cost character for Ely to play down, but it also could simply go into the inkwell if Ely wants to develop the lucky dime this turn. Now, I think the scuttle is going to be the option for Ely. Yeah. If they're confident they hit an item, but if Ooh. you miss an item, it could be a disaster. And maybe that's why Ely's decided to just play it safe and develop the lucky dime. Yeah, no, I respect it. I think that, that you could. there's an argument that you could have gone with the scuttle, try and find that Maurice's workshop yep. so that you can start to build your resources but playing it safe I completely respect the dime is now on the board we really need a workshop though so that Ely's top decked items just turn into card yeah. draw the thing is if Ely goes for the scuttle and misses yeah. they are spending their whole turn on playing a 1-3 character yeah. which quests for one that um, would have been a nightmare yeah and wouldn't wouldn't have inked in the turn which yep. is not what you want so no I totally respect it we are seeing that golden harp coming down for a cost of one so I assume we have a song we do strength for a raging fire doing three damage to his own golden harp absolutely stellar because of course if you don't play a song by the end of the turn golden harp is banished so that allows 
allows it to stay on the field and it will be able to quest for two next turn. You wanted the Mauritius workshop. Well, there it is now. Ely just looking for any sort of item and they're going to be start able to utilizing the card draw potential of Mauritius workshop. It's a three cost uninkable item and whenever you play another item, you can pay one ink to draw another card and you can use that multiple times per turn. Ely also sat on a be prepared, kind of just waiting for Pierre to develop the board a little bit further and walk into a huge be prepared, which I'm sure you're getting ready for, Baker. Oh, obviously, you know me too well. So, big Robin quest Hood coming come down. through, Cinderella Lawrence and the Golden Harp. So Pierre's getting up there at nine, but the Golden Harp is going to banish itself at the end of the turn as Pierre did not play any songs. And it's another Maurice's workshop. Oh, oh. No, he didn't play it. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. Didn't? No, oh he didn't my do it. Goodness. He didn't do it. We need, I nearly got carried away there. Joe, he, Joe well. even set me up. He I was like, this is, Baker, he was like, this is your moment, moment, Baker, but it didn't even happen. Don't worry, we're getting there. I think Ely might have shown Pierre that it was in the hand yep. as well. Decided to go for the Maurice's workshop instead. Yep. No, I develop a bit more card draw. I respect it. These Maurice's workshop are what, are what I want. And now the whole new world is going to discard the Be Prepared. But the big problem is, Baker, Ruby Sapphire has a lot of very powerful cards yep. and suddenly got seven in hand, yep. soon to be eight when Ely draws for turn. Yeah, Pierre still is in the lead concerning law, so that is a good thing. But the same has been true of, uh, or the same was true of game one, and was still able to have it robbed of him by Ely. We're going to be inking the Ursula Vanessa. This is a big quest coming through this from is. Pierre. The Golden Harp is sticking on the board, but look at the left side card in Ely's hand, and we see it. Be prepared. That's the moment you've been waiting for. The Be Prepared clears the board and all the characters are banished, but the items remain on Ely's side of the board. And with that lucky dime, they can go from two law to 20 in record time, especially with a Tamatoa and an abundance of items. Yeah, how many items do we have? Two Maurice's Workshop, one Ice Block, one, two, three, four, five. So we've got six. Oh, and the Vitalisphere, I missed that. So seven. So this Tamatoa along with Lucky Dime could put a two-turn clock onto the game if he's able to develop it. Yeah, seven lore away. Robin Hood enchanted. Piglet Pooh Pirate Captain. That is potentially questing for five next turn if Pierre can get down a third character for the Piglet, which would put them at 18 lore. So Ely is really going to be looking to remove as many cards from the board as possible. Mm -hmm. They have a let it go. They have a brawl. Let it go onto Robin Hood is decided. Yeah, Robin Hood running through the inkwell, courtesy of that Robin Hood. Now comes the brawl to clear the Pooh Pirate Captain as well. So Ely finding a lot of answers off of that whole new world. But Pierre still has a hand. We see a couple of copies of Rapunzel, one strength of a raging fire. Is that a Lawrence as well? Yep. Two. Double Rapunzel enters the board. Eight ink spent. These Rapunzels questing for two. If Pierre can quest with them both, they're going to be at 17 and within touching distance. Ely, though, Tamatoa time. Here is Tamatoa with the Lucky Dime is getting an insane amount of lore. Ice block for a little bit more. Every item on the board gives Tamatoa one more lore pip. And that Lucky Dime plus Tamatoa could end things very quickly indeed. But the Rapunzels remain on the board. This game could be over in just a matter of moments. It is neck and neck. This is check. There is there are eight types of one, two, three, four, five. Six. Yep, eight on the board. Tamatoa will be questing for nine, and then the lucky dime would pop him up the other nine to eighteen, and that would be exactly twenty. This is check. Pierre needs to answer either this dime or this Tamatoa. Well, sing Zeus. That's a start. Rapunzel. That's a start. Can you do another three damage to this Tamatoa? You have to remove it. He does. Oh, no, it's not going to enough. Raging fire. And then oh. sing, play a whole new world. So there's still three ink left for Pierre. And they're looking for something to damage this Tamatoa. Yeah, yep, we Pierre need knows strength. that Tamatoa has to go right now. He's got nothing. I can't see He's not a found anything. He's found nothing. And he can play the aerial. But then there's no ink left to play the, to play the song. Tamatoa plus the dime is going to get Ely from 2 to 20 in a single moment. Yep. 
here just making sure there's nothing they can do. They've got three ink left. Yep. They could play the aerial to try and find a song, but there's going to be no ink left to do it. That's what they go for, aerial. I don't think there's any one-cost no. songs. The Storm oh. Rage on is there, but there's no ink. There's no singers available. Pass is over. And that's Wendy game. Law. And that is game. Ely is your Disney Locana Challenge Bologna champion. What a final, Baker. Absolutely incredible games from both players. Ruby Sapphire Items is your Disney Locana Challenge Bologna champion. It was supposed to be the tournament all about Buck. If I'm playing.